Hi guys, Mimi G here. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Child, it's been a minute since I have done, honestly, any content. <laughs> because things have just been so crazy and incredibly busy. And honestly, I just, I haven't had time to like do YouTube videos or pattern reviews or, you know, um, fabric hauls or honestly nothing because I've been either you know, we've been sort of working on the store. We have all new in-person classes uh, at the store. So if you're local to Atlanta, um, you can come and take a class with me, Brittany and Norris. We all teach um, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then, you know, just sort of December was crazy. Gearing up to the new year, I launched an entire new academy called Pattern Making Academy. Um, so on top of Sewed Academy, now I have Pattern Making Academy, which is strictly all pattern making, learning pattern making. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, oh my God, it's so good. Um, I'm not the one teaching, so it, it is my um, product, but I actually have a lead instructor. Her name is Trisha Camacho, and she's phenomenal. She's, I mean, I've tried learning pattern making over the years. I don't know, maybe like at least a dozen times. Um, you know, I know pattern making and, and drafting my way, right? Like I could, I can figure it out and I will make a garment. Uh, but teaching it is different. You know what I'm saying? Like you really have to teach the foundation principles and you really have to be able to teach somebody in the proper way so that they can truly become a pattern maker and, you know, see something and literally make it. And so I really wanted to sort of do um, you know, a pattern making academy that was like Sew It Academy that really taught you from like the very, very beginning. Um, and then every month we make a new garment after we get through like the foundation principles, which is so exciting. Um, and she's the only person I've ever been able to learn pattern making from. So I knew that she was going to be the perfect person for pattern making academy. So we launched that Black Friday and it's just been so crazy. So um, I have been sewing though. I've sewn, well, last year I did like a whole month of sewing for my book because I have to photograph everything and um, and I finally finished my book. I turned it into my editor. Uh, and so, you know, now they put it all together and do whatever magic they do. And um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and then into the new year, I really just wanted to focus on um, you know, the businesses that I currently have and obviously my position as VP for design group, um, which is, you know, the pattern companies, Simplicity, Butterick, Vogue, McCall's and New Look, <laughs> actually. Um, and then I'm working on another new project, which we're hoping to launch um, for fall of this year. So super excited about that. But anyway, um, I had been sewing and so I thought, yo, I need to do like a pattern review of some of the things that I've been making. So Today I'm going to do a pattern review on McCall's 8007, which is this um, wide leg jean pattern that came out, I think it came out last year. I'm pretty sure it came out last year. Um, and I've had it in my pattern stash for a while and I've been dying to make it, but um, I just hadn't gotten around to it. Now I ain't going to lie, when I first saw the pattern envelope, it wasn't like, ooh girl, make me. Um, I kind of looked at it and was like, okay, I see the potential. <laughs> um, and so I knew that if, you know, if I made it, um, that I would love it. And sure enough, I'm a very curvy girl. So um, generally when I see something like um, a wide leg jean that has a high waist, I know that once I put it on, I'm going to love it. Um, so I made it out of a non-stretch cotton fabric. I will say that it was actually a pretty easy pattern to put together. So... Um, it wasn't super difficult. I will uh, uh, say that the back, you have to make sure to transfer your notches because, and let me show you. Um, so the, the back of the jeans have this inset. Hold on one second. Let me adjust this so you guys can see. Okay. So you see this inset in the butt, which is great, right? It's a really nice booty feature. <laughs> um, and I really like it, but you do have to transfer your notches because one, you're sewing 
around a curve, right? So you wanna make sure that um, you ease it in uh, the right way. Also, um, the waistband was pretty easy. The, the belt loops, the fly front. I mean, there was really honestly nothing about this pattern that I found really difficult. It is a jeans pattern, but it's like your, it's not your traditional jean, right? It doesn't have a five pocket jean. Um, it doesn't, you know, have all of those things, but it has some really great top stitching and I used white top stitching because I wanted it to stand out. Um, the fly front was pretty simple, like I said. Um, I didn't do the underlap of the fly, um, because I was lazy. I was like, yeah, I don't need it, right? Um, but I think if I do it again, I will I will definitely do the underlap. Um, I also really loved the fact that I used just one denim, and then I used the right side and the wrong side to give me the contrasting, because I did want the contrasting. I thought that was really cool. Um, and they're really wide, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at that. That's that's a wide leg right there. Um, and I loved it. I thought it was really good. Now, this denim is actually a really lightweight denim. It's not super heavy. I would probably, I would probably guess it's probably about a 10 ounce um, denim. I know that a lot of people don't make or don't like to sew their own jeans. One, because it could be a little intimidating. Um, and two, you want to know um, that you're doing the right thing so that you get like a nice finished look and it doesn't look like you just made your jeans at home so you know using the right needle the, using the right thread making sure that you're top stitching with like a jeans thread or a buttonhole thread so that you get that nice like heavy weighted thread versus you know your regular all-purpose um thread which isn't going to give you sort of that look um so top stitching is really really important using a denim needle is really really important because you're working with like multiple layers and depending on how um thick your denim is you know once you get to those joining seams it's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker and so you know you want to make sure that you have a denim needle so that it's thicker and it's going to go through all of those layers um I also, so I was saying that, you know, using the non-stretch denim is also another thing that people don't like to do because, um, you know, especially if you're curvy and you have to make pattern adjustments, like a sway back adjustment, because I have a really deep curve in my back before my booty hit. Um, so I always have to make that adjustment, which usually for me, um, I try to take in deeper darts in the back. That usually fixes it pretty easy without me having to do too many adjustments. Um, and then... Also, you know, when you have a little stretch, it gives you a little give, uh, which is easier to sort of fit. But I actually didn't find any stretch denim that I liked. So I ended up just buying a non-stretch and I knew that I could contour it to my body once I started sewing because you have darts. You also have these seams in the middle, which were really helpful in fitting. Um, and then for the back, um, this was actually the only part that I wanted to make sure that was going to fit my body because um, once you attach it, it's attached. <laughs> so, um, but it made it really easy because I did end up taking um, deeper darts here and then I did end up taking more here. So I just basically graded from here um, and then just went up and took a bigger bite of that seam allowance. So I think I went from like five eighths of an inch seam allowance to a three quarters of an inch seam allowance once I got to the waist. Um, and that was really honestly the only adjustments I had to make. This pattern, I cut a size, what did I cut? I cut a size 14 and it fit me without any major fit fixes, which for me is a big deal because usually when I make pants, I have to make certain adjustments because of the shape of my body. Um, but in this instance, um, I cut, sewed, and honestly just had to take in, like I said, bigger darts in the back. Um, and I did a bigger seam allowance at the waist, um, at the center back. And beyond that, it fit like perfect. <laughs> so I was really, really amazed. Um, I do have this really great stretch black denim that I've been holding on to so I think because I love these so much that I'm gonna make them again so um but anyway if you're maybe thinking about making your own jeans um and just feel intimidated by all of the steps like a traditional jean would have a back yoke and like I said it would have you know the front pocket with the coin pocket and it's 
you know, you have a lot more going on if you're doing it like a traditional jean. Um, but this sort of is like a cheat <laughs> um, because you don't have all the pocket you don't have to worry about in the front. Um, you also don't have a back yoke, which you have to do. So if you're thinking about it and maybe want to do it out of like a cotton or like a twill, that would work really nice too. You could actually just make this more of a like pant and not use a denim fabric. Um, you could do that too. So um, I just wanted to come on and give you guys um, sort of like my little review of the pattern. I think it's actually a pretty easy pattern to put together as long as, like I said, you transfer all your notches and your dots so that you can make the back of the sewing, that sort of curve in the back, um, easier. Um, and then honestly, like I said, the fit I think was really great, So, which is surprising. Um, so I, I didn't make a muslin. <laughs> I rarely ever make a muslin just cause I'm like, I'll just figure out the fit as I go. Um, and you know, I always pick my, uh, pattern size based on the finished measurement that's printed on the paper and not the back of the envelope. So that also makes it really easy. Um, and I always figure, um, you know, if I cut a 14 and I need to take in smaller seam allowances, I generally will do that. Um, sometimes depending on the pattern, I might have to go from a 14 to a 16 at the hip, but for this one, I just cut a straight 14. And like I said, I just had to take it in a little bit at the waist because obviously I have a, I think an 11 inch difference between my waist and my, my hip. So <laughs> I always have to make that adjustment. Um, but if you have any questions about this pattern, put them in the comments below. I try to answer as much as I can, but guys, you know, it's like I got, comments on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and <laughs> TikTok and everywhere. It's hard to get to all of them, but um, I will try to answer some within <laughs> like a certain amount of time. Um, and thanks for watching. As always, um, I appreciate you and I will see you in the next one. Peace.